This is my 2019 steering wheel. The drivers are involved right from the very first stages of the design of the steering wheel for a new car or for a new season. And that involves everything from the physical shape of the wheel, the layout of the buttons, and also the interaction with all the complex systems on board. Their input is critical to what we do, and of course they're the ones who will be using it day in and day out. The wheel is designed around switches that are quite robust, used in aircraft as well, robust against accidental actions under vibration. You imagine, of course, the driver using that wheel in a high vibration environment wearing gloves. Designed again around first order retrievability, the idea that the driver can get to anything he needs while keeping his hands on the wheel and reaching with his thumbs. This one is called the Strat Switch, and that's the engine modes. My favorite is Strat. That's full beans, uh, all, all the power from the engine. And depending on the racing situation, we have many different modes for either defending another car or attacking or saving the engine when we can, or uh, having a bit more deployment from the MGUK if, if needed. The pit lane speed limiter is normally set up to either 80 or 60 kilometers per hour, depending on the limit uh, the track has for the pit lane. The rubber molds are made with my hand, so it's a very, very good fit. We'll go to the first race of the season with three wheels for each driver, and the drivers will run all three of those over the course of a weekend. They might be the primary wheel, their backup wheel, and then an experimental wheel with any sort of systems that we're working on that may develop in future races. Over the course of a given race weekend, we do change the setup of a wheel based on the driver's requirements. There are requirements, of course, for specific circuits, but also the way they use the car develops during the year. Around that first track of the year in Melbourne, the drivers are both going to be immensely busy. If I look at a qualifying lap from last year, they're making something along the lines of uh, 50 gear shifts over the course of a qualifying lap. They're steering through 17 corners. They're making seven or eight changes on rotary switches over the course of the lap. And of course, they're feeding back uh, the information they see on the dash to us as well. Our only way of interacting with the car once it's on track is via the driver. We can make suggestions and the car itself will try and recover any sort of failure that it encounters. But if we want to physically change something on the wheel, we need to do that through the driver. Here is the radio button. It says talk. So while I press it, I can talk to the guys, have a chat. And when I press it again, then the line is, um, is cut. The use to which the drivers put the steering wheel changes from circuit to circuit throughout the course of the, of the racing season. Melbourne, on the one hand, is the first uh, track of the year. It is a street circuit, so offers some unique challenges from that point of view. When we compare it to a circuit like Monaco, for instance, we see it's a street circuit as well, but radically different in the way they use the wheel. So well, at Melbourne, they have time to be thinking about their changes and being very precise on their downshifts, for instance, under the reasonably rough braking conditions. In Monaco, everything is tight. There are no runoff areas. The gear shifts are much closer together. They have to react much more on instinct. Over here we have some rotaries, um, this is for the diff entry. Over here we have the diff uh, for the mid corner, so when the car is going around the corner, in the middle of the corner, it changes the car balance quite quickly. You can either gain understeer or oversteer with adjusting this. Here is the neutral button. We select neutral when we stop the car after the session or after the race. And actually, if we hold it for long, we get a reverse gear. Um, I think I've never used it uh, with, a, with a car, but uh, you never know. In Monaco or somewhere, you might get stuck and reverse could be the only way to save you. The modern Formula One car is a pretty complex bit of machinery, and we really ask the drivers to operate in two modes. We want them to be intuitive creatures who interact with the car the way they would have done with a go-kart when they were kids, but we also want them to understand a complex bit of electronics and systems that uh, it really takes an engineer to, to understand. If you have a first look, it might look complex, but with practice, um, I know it by heart. <laughs>